Let's now review what we've covered so far regarding viscous flows and boundary layers. First, we considered that the boundary layer, displacement body quantities, the mass defect, and delta star were known. And then we said that the equivalent inviscid flow could be determined as a result. And this allowed determination of the loss of lift effect due to viscous decambering of airfoils. Next, we assume that the equivalent inviscid flow is known. which meant that UV, UE of S, was available. That means we can determine the boundary layer integral defects, P of S and K of S, or the thicknesses, delta star of S and theta of S. And that meant that profile drag could be determined by either the far downstream momentum defect or the far downstream kinetic energy defect divided by the free stream velocity. But the issue is, unless the boundary layers are very thin, UE, the edge velocity, depends on delta star the displacement thickness, so that the equivalent inviscid flow and the boundary layer flow are coupled. So really, we can't solve one independently of the other in practice. So before we go back and think about this coupling further, let's first consider the case where the flow is fully attached and where the boundary layers are very thin. So delta star over C is much smaller than, say, the thickness to cord of the airfoil. Now the flow over the NACA 0008 airfoil at zero degrees angle of attack for the high Reynolds number represents just such a flow. So in that case, UE of S is approximately given by the in equivalent inviscid flow uh, given by the potential solution, so neglecting any boundary layer or viscous effects. And then the boundary layer problem can be solved. Without worrying about the coupling. So we could calculate the drag subject to the limitations of attached flow and thin boundary layers. However, as soon as the boundary layer is thick anywhere, or separation occurs, then coupling needs to be taken into account. Conceptually, the simplest way to deal with that coupling is using something like an iterative approach. So you would solve, say, the potential flow first, with the boundary condition given by the normal mass flux. And then the output of that would be basically the edge velocity gradient 
and then you would solve the boundary layer equations using that. So these are ordinary differential equations uh, for theta delta star with the boundary condition that the edge velocity is given by the potential. And then out of this would come the mass defect, m of s, which could be fed back to resolve the potential flow. And these conceptually could be iterated upon until a solution uh, is achieved in which neither uh, part ever continues to change. However, in practice, this approach tends to be numerically unstable, and it will fail if there's separation anywhere. So the real solution is to simultaneously solve the EIF and boundary layer flow. And this is what's done in programs like XFOIL. Now note that we've skipped the details of the numerical solution of these equations, because that's beyond the scope of the course, and the focus here is on the conceptual understanding. So what's instead hoped is that sufficient insight has been gained into the effects and behavior of boundary layers and aerodynamic flows that the results from numerical computations, like those shown earlier in this lecture, um, can be analyzed and explained.